Welcome back to the Crypto's Key Conversation. We're gonna quickly jump into CoinGecko here. We're currently sitting at a $1.73 trillion market cap, currently down 4.6%. Looking at the top 10, Bitcoin sitting at 36,319. Ethereum sitting at 2,427. Tether is Tether. Binance Coin sitting at 370. Cardano sitting at $1.03. XRP sitting at 60 cents. Solana sitting at 89.96. Terra sitting at 57.92. Dot sitting at uh, 1797. So as you can see, we have a lot of red in the market still, just due to the same fear, same fuzz, same uh, uncertainty in the markets coming over here to the Bitcoin Fear and Greed Index. We're currently sitting at a 20. Uh, we were just at a 23 yesterday, but now uh, we're back down to a 20. And as you can see, we've been in this range for some time now. I wanted to start the video off here with uh, Johnny Deaton's tweet here. He says 17,000 messages have been sent to Congress from U.S. holders asking for an investigation. 13,000 international holders have joined the petition asking for the same. We won't stop until uh, there's an investigation. So if you haven't done so, go make sure you go in and, uh, you know, do this connect to Congress and kind of go through this uh, this process to kind of help, you know, a Johnny Deaton, the class action lawsuit and just the, the community members in uh, kind of pushing this agenda, getting the uh, investigation on, you know, the SEC going. So coming over here, so we talked about how uh, Ripple has, you know, bought back some of their Series C, uh, series C uh, investments uh, back from their investors. So it says, amid SEC battle, crypto uh, company Ripple uh, Labs buys back its Series C investment. So uh, I just wanted to touch on kind of what Charles Gasparino and Eleanor Terry uh, were talking about here. It says, breaking, uh, Ripple's repurchase of its private shares has some crypto investors feeling bullish about the company's ability to prevail in the SEC case and then IPO possibly th this year after. Others worry it's a move to limit liability in a case of a loss. Uh, coming down here, XRP Crypto Wolf says, Ripple has a one, bil one billion plus war chest, so the fact that they repurchased Series C shares shows me they are very confident in winning and selling the XRP lawsuit along with how valuable those shares will be once uh, they IPO. So absolutely. So like if, if that's their strategy, they're highly confident in their case. They know they want to IPO right after. Like how valuable are those shares going to be? You know, currently I think they were sitting at on, um, was it linked to? They were sitting at like 40 something dollars. Like who knows when the IPO, what that price would be. Coming over here, Eleanor Terrett says, oh, one of Ripple shareholders, uh, Tetragon, unsuccessfully sued Ripple to retrieve its 2019 175 million Series C investment after learning of the SEC lawsuit. Ripple just bought back its original investment, and they tell me uh, Tet Tetragon is still an investor in the company alongside SBI Group. Crypto uh, uh, XRP Crypto Wolf says uh, Tetragon knows Ripple will win or settle the XRP lawsuit, so of course they're going to keep a moon bag. So, yeah. so absolutely. I know if it were me personally, I would definitely make sure I had a nice size, you know, uh, healthy bag for when that happens, especially for everything that we've been seeing in, 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 um, in revealing within, you know, this ecosystem, the Twitterverse kind of, you know, uh, exposing the SEC for, for what they are and, you know, their uh, negative and, and bad intention and ways. Coming over here. Uh, the, this is from the digital asset investment. This is kind of quickly touching on what we're talking about when it comes to, uh, you know, the Ripple buying back their Series C uh, uh, shares. So let's take a listen in. And Liz, we do have some breaking news from the company is telling Fox Business exclusively that if they do win this case and they say part of the reason why they, they're buying back the shares, the private shares, is because they feel very confident they're going to win the case, is that they plan on going, uh, going, going public. Uh, right after the verdict comes in, uh, so they're they're telling us us this exclusively. They believe their chances are very good. Uh, obviously, it's uh, you know they may be talking their own book here, but clearly um, there's a lot of tongues wagging about why they would just go turn around and issue XRP, which is kind of their native. So that's just uh, that's Charles Gasparino on Fox Business talking about. Uh, what Ripple's doing and kind of what their strategy is with this ongoing case as well. So I want to touch on the main topic here. Uh, this is Jerry Brito, and he puts up this uh, this important tweet thread here that it's extremely massive, and we all really need to pay attention to kind of what's going on with this. So we're just going to read through it, kind of see what he's saying. So coming through here, he says, important, including in America uh, Competes Act, just introduced in the House and which will very likely pass in some form is a provision that would be disastrous, not just for cryptocurrency, but for privacy and due process generally. Coming down here, he says, 
the so-called special measures provisions proposed by, this is uh, Jim Hines. Uh, is it Himes? Let me see. Um, Jim, yeah, Jim Himes. So by Jim Himes, it would uh, essentially give the Treasury Secretary unchecked and unilateral power to ban exchanges and other financial institutions from engaging in cryptocurrency transactions. How would it do this? Uh, Bank Secrecy Act 5318A uh, allows the secretary to um, excuse me allows the secretary to identify a primary money laundering concern and take special measures to one uh, require financial institutions to report information on the concern and or two prohibit uh, financial institutions from maintaining accounts related to the concern. Special measures authority is a vast uh, power that the Secretary of the Treasury has today. So in the current statute, there are checks on that power. It says, first, the law uh, requires that the Treasury engage in a public rulemaking before in instituting a prohibition. Second, the Secretary can impose the surveillance special measures through a simple order. But its duration is limited to 120 days and must be accompanied by a public rulemaking. While not full due process... These, limit, uh, these limitations at least alert the public and gives the public some opportunity to uh, commit, comment on a special measure's merit or uh, constitutionality. He says, the new provisions would do three things. Add certain transmittal, uh, transmittal of funds to the list of things that can be banned by the secretary. Eliminate all public not notice and comment requirements. Eliminate 120-day limitation for measures imposed without regulation. If adopted and it's a law, this provision would be a disaster, not just for the crypto, but for the privacy and democra uh, democratic public process related to all types of financial transactions. It empowers the secretary to prohibit any or indeed all cryptocurrency transactions or any other kind of transactions without any process, rulemaking or limitations on the duration of the pro uh, prohibi prohibition. This provision was first introduced as an amendment to the National Defense uh Authorization Act last year by representative and that's uh, Jim Jim Himes. It says after alerting folks in the House and Senate of that amendment's un or says unintended consequences, it was removed from the final bill that passed. Unfortunately, it's back verbatim without any improvements. <laughs> so they like tr literally tried to slip it in in this one. <laughs> it still strips out all administrative process and duration limitations on the secretary's power to condition or prohibit transactions at financial institutions associated with primary money laundering concerns. It's time to call your member of Cong Congress and ask them uh, that they, they, they take action to make sure that the notice and comment and duration limitations are not removed from the 31 USC 5318A as the American Co uh, Competes Act would do. So there's been a lot of headway with, uh, with what just happened with uh, you know, Jim Heim trying to throw this in, you know, kind of sneaking under the radar. But, you know, obviously they've been caught by the community. We're trying to throw it out there. So make sure that you do contact your representative and let them know, like, hey, this this cannot happen because it is it will be disastrous and uh, truly affects, you know, how we operate within just our our own ecosystem. But just all like he, like how he says in all transactions in uh, a grander scope and more generalized uh uh, scope in the way of looking at things. So the, this is a gentleman right here. This is Jim Himes. So, you know, <laughs> a digital asset investor says, uh, what do you say? I got it right here. Uh, pretty much, I uh, lost it. Pretty much the, dig the digital asset investor pretty much was like, make sure you remember this face. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Let me come over here. I thought it was pretty funny. So coming down to uh, his page here. He says, "Where's he at? Yeah, right here. Don't forget this man, Jim Himes. When you when you go when you vote Connecticut, he's the one that tried to slip the anti crypto provision in. Add add him to the Gensler uh, the Gensler web. So absolutely, any anybody that's gonna you know not be fair, have some sort of vendetta or some sort of you know negative view of the crypto market and try to hinder or stifle you know its growth and innovation within our space, like absolutely, they need to be voted out hands down. So you do your part." you know, contact your representative and, and let them know that, Hey, this, this can't pass with all that being said, stay strong out there. Be safe.